What would it be like to live inside a thunderstorm? Try to imagine for a second a storm that stays in the same place, returning every night, night after night, with all its thunder and lightning and rain. That's not a fantasy. It's a real place. The site of my thesis investigation is the region around Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela, a lake comparable in size to Lake Ontario. Over that lake, nearly every night of every year for hundreds of years, a storm has been raging. This permanent, nocturnal, recurring thunderstorm is known as the Catatumbo Lightning, and it holds the Guinness World Record for the most lightning strikes per square kilometer of any place on Earth. Now, Lake Maracaibo is a highly contentious site. Along the west shore, people live in small fishing villages that are built on stilts right out onto the water. But the local fisheries are under threat because of pollution from the eastern half of the lake, which is littered with a forest of oil rigs. Constant pipeline spills devastate the ecology of the lake, and methane gas emissions threaten to throw off the delicate balance of wind and weather that produces the storm. Venezuela risks destroying not only the ecosystems of the largest lake in South America, but also losing the Catatumbo lightning, which is one of the region's most potent cultural symbols. In the face of this degradation, I'm designing a storm observatory on Lake Maracaibo to refocus attention on the extraordinary weather event overhead. It can be built using some of the same technologies and facilities that are used to construct the oil platforms, but in contrast with the drilling rigs, this will be a place focused not on mining the ground, but on engaging the sky. I'm calling it a storm sensorium, a combination of observatory, research set station, storm archive, and severe weather spa, inviting local people, ecotourists, and scientists into the space of the storm. It's a building that becomes an instrument or an apparatus for safely experiencing the storm up close with all of our senses. Now, why should this place and this design matter? Why should we care? Well, first of all, I think it matters a great deal that a country like Venezuela, currently experiencing economic disaster because of its dependence on oil, learns to value its other extraordinary natural resources. But there's a larger lesson. Our cities and our buildings are designed to shield and protect us from changes in the weather. This disconnection that we have from everyday atmospheric change is one of the things that blinds us to the devastating effect that we are having on the global climate. By investigating one of the most extreme weather conditions on Earth, my thesis asks how architecture can do a better job as a mediator of weather. Instead of only sheltering and insulating us, can architecture extend our sensory perceptions and become an instrument for connecting us more completely with the storm that is our world? Thank you.